Hi, in this video, I'm going to show the post-op assessment of anterior temporal lobotomy using differential tractography. I would like to give thanks to uh, David Petrosian for uh, offering the data to showcase here. There, there are two patients, um, both receive anterior temporal lobotomy to treat epilepsy. Both have visual field defect. And the purpose for differential chartography is to compare pre-op and post-op scans and try to identify the cause and location of the track damage that lead to visual field defect. So let's take a look of the data here. The data we have, including um, the DTI scan, pre-op and post-op, and also the T1. So for differential tractography, let's first analyze the 52-year-old patient um, and then compare their DTI scan. So here we have two SRC files, and there are videos about how to generate SRC file from DICOM image or from NIPT file. And the first thing we're going to do is to reconstruct this to SRC file. So start DSS Studio, you could Click on the step T2, the construction. Then set that. Here you can set that all the SRC file you want to apply all the same parameter. And DSS Studio will open the first one and you could just apply the same to all of them. Um, and here the key parameter to choose is whether to use DTI, GQI, and QSDR. Here for the difference between GQI and DTI is GQI usually give a better sensitivity, uh, even though we are using the same data. So I would prefer using GQI. And the difference between GQI and QSDR is GQI reconstruct all the data in the native space, whereas the QSDR will have a normalization that bring all the data to the template space. And here, the, the uh, method of choice, I would say, is QSDR. The, re the reason is that there could be post-operative deformation because we, the um, anterior temporal lobotomy will take out some of the tissue and there will be a slightly brain shift, even just one millimeter or two millimeter, that will give a lot of difference. So here, to avoid those deformation that causing problem in differential tractography, the preferred method would be QSDR, so that that would reconstruct all the data into the same template space. And the parameter here is two millimeter resolution. Usually, we choose the value that's the same as the acquisition, which is two millimeter. So just choose QSDR and click run reconstruction. Then DSS Studio will reconstruct fifth file for each of the SRC. So for each year of the SRC file. You, DSS Studio will create QSDR fit file like this. I copy that to a new folder to save our time. So for the pre-op and post-op, we've got each of them a fit file. And then to run differential tractography, we first step, we can open the post-operative fit file in DSS Studio as step T3. You can click on the step T3 and select this file, or you either could just drag this file in. Yes, DSS Studio will bring out the tracking interface, but here we only need to explore the QA value for a comparison. So how differential tractography work is to compare the anisotropy difference between the pre-op and post-op, and based on this anisotropy difference, we will run fiber tracking, then that's called the differential tractography. So here, we will save the post-operative QA value as a nifty file, and then just close the window. So you see here the QA value save here, and here just to remind you, all the data here, including the fit file, already in the MNI space. Um, they are not in the native space, so you. Here we cannot just load the native space T1 to show that the structure. Then the second step would we'll open the preoperative fifth file. This has to bring out the interface, and you can see the preoperative and the source of fee with the QA value generated from QSDR reconstruction. 
Then we'll bring in the post-operative QR value by the slice menu, insert other images, and so that the file we just generated. So you see here is bringing in the post-operative QR value. So you can quickly switch here. This one is a pre-operative that being saved within the fifth file of the pre-op. And then the one being just loaded or the post-op will be here. So quickly switch to this two, you could have a visual comparison of how they look alike or not different. So we're now ready to run differential fiber tracking. And before then, usually the, a quick step I'm going to do is just click on the fiber tracking and see how open fiber tracking is going. Usually you won't, you will just show a rough open tracks like this. If you get a really massive result, um, then probably you may need to troubleshoot if there are construction error or either there are acquisition problem. And there are, there are video showing how to troubleshoot if you run into some problem is not showing correct fiber orientation or the fiber tracking doesn't go really well. Okay, this is just a quick um, quality check before differential fiber tracking. Now we are going to do the, the difference and then tracking the and the source of the difference. The second thing we're going to do next is in the option menu, uh, option window, click to expand the tracking parameter and click on the differential tracking. There are two parameters we need to specify here. That's the two metrics to compare. So here we are going to compare the baseline QA, which is stored here as a QA. And then the metric two will be the post-op QA here, you can see that this has to be automatically bring it in, um, but you just need to confirm with the baseline and the, and the post-operative. And the calculation will follow the matrix one minus matrix two, so that, uh, and also divided by matrix one, so that there will be a percentage difference here. Point four means that more, if the difference is more than 40%, then tracking will enhance it. And there are other parameters, the two key parameters, one is the minimum band. Later on, we would test on different parameters, see how it goes. And another one is how many seats we need to put it in. So once we did, we just use the default setting here and non paper tracking. As you can see here, it's showing us something. As we move the slides, visualization, so this will be a left temporal loader corresponding to the, the third, uh, to a temporal lobotomy. And still there are some noisy, maybe due to misalignment between pre-up and post-up, and also could be due to the slice difference. There's sometimes the lower slide may have different coverage or different signal intensity problem. Uh, so this may not be true findings. Um, a way to eliminate them or to see if we can get more results is to change. So we, quite, we could experiment this, I could reduce the minimum length. So if we reduce it, we will essentially get more results. But of course, it will also include more systematic error than we may need to reduce. And this systematic er error will depend on the quality of the alignment. Um, here we have two millimeter vessel resolution for DWI. So the alignment, even though it's doing, try to do the best job, but still they could see some of the things coming up and may not seem to be a real change here. So one thing we could do is we could either increase the minimum lens and get uh, a more specified result, or either we could use a lower minimum dance, which is the first result we got here. And then we could manually remove those we think is not real. So one way to remove those noisy fragments would be using the priming. So priming will try to keep the larger difference in showing here where while eliminating those um, fragmented fibers. So we could repeat it doing this and Windows is uh, the shortcut is Ctrl T, and Mac is Command T. So we could just repeat doing this to remove those fragments. And there are still some remains. And what we could do is use manual delete of the track. So the shortcut is Ctrl D here. So what we could do is 
press Ctrl D, and then you can see the cursor become cross, and then just set that the track we want to remove, and repeat it doing this to get to keep those results we think what we are interested in. And for those that we think were well, probably not a true result just due to misalignment, we could just remove them. So repeated doing this, you can look at different direction. Um, some of may be true, but maybe it's not to our best interest here, which is in terms of the visual field defect, we're just keeping those in the tempo low. So we are quickly get it down and you can double check here to see if it's in line. We're always the anatomical structure. So maybe this one doesn't really make sense. Um, just keep those. And keep in mind, those tracks are having a large anisotropy difference between the pre-op and post-op. You can see here is mostly added into a temporal lobe that have been removed during the surgery. Once done, we could save it. Go to the track menu, save tracks, save current tracks as, and then here, I will usually will put an MMI as a prefix to remind us that, well, this track is in the MNI space, it's not in the native space. So in when opening this track with the fifth file, we need to pay attention to is uh, additional step, which I will show later on. So save it. So we got the tracks here. Mm -hmm. So we got all the findings as the difference of the trapping removed during the surgery. Now we're going to look at this track in the native space. So as I mentioned, let's close this window and go back to the SRC file. As I mentioned here, so we could open the preoperative SRC and instead of the using the QSDR, if we are to look at things in the native space, we would choose GQI. So here, just instead of using QSDR, we use GQI and run reconstruction. So steps doing is I create another fifth file, which is in the uh, native space. And then we could load the MNI space track with this fifth file. So I'll just bring this here to the GQI folder. And this I just don't do my things clear. Um, I separate those files to avoid confusion. So I can open the preoperative fifth file to construct it by GQI. You can see here the file extension till is a GQI constructed file. So open it up, you, you will see this Brain structure looks like a native space thing. It's not like being normalized in the template space. Then here, we could go to the track menu and open the MNI space track. So the first function will open tracks assuming it's in the native space. But if we have a track save in the MNI space, we use this function. Now we go to the one we just saved with the from QSDR with a prefix of MNI. And you will notice that there's a sort of wrong in normalization. Let's try to normalize this brain structure with the template so that it could bring the MNI space template into the native space. Now it's done, we can see how it overlaps with the pre-op, showing those tracks that have been removed during the, the surgery. Now the next step we are going to do is to see, well, does this track involve of the radiation? or either LGN or of the track or the nerve. So the things we we're going to do is go, we could quickly use the auto track function, click on it, go to the sh short projection pathway. And set that the opti radiation on the left and go fiber tracking. And you will see here, so if you would like to get more results, you can change, adding more seeds. Or either here you see there's a total of 5,000 tracks. And perhaps I would say, well, I want to get 6,000 tracks regardless how many seeds are put in. And then 
run the fiber tracking again. And you may notice some of the check may not look right. And you, we could change the tolerance distance. For example, I can reduce it to make it more restrictive. See if that helps. And then here, instead of 6,000, I could put it 10,000 and click on fiber tracking. So here, just for example, for the, the result, we got, and we could still use manual delete to remove some track we are doing things like matching or understanding or an phone pathway. And also you may note that most of, of the fiber tracking method is not able to capture the upper portion, the speech uh, sharp turning portion of the mayor's loop. So one thing I usually did here is instead of try to track in this difficult region, we could just manually draw or just annotate those missing regions by looking at the fiber orientation on the left. So that's how I'm going to do it. So zooming in here and then scrolling down to the location or either you could use a keyboard shortcut E and D. So if you hit the E and D key on a keyboard, it will quickly allow you to go through different SL view. So here you will see this, the tracks have been mapped here. It may not be complete, especially say the lower portion of the opti tracks of the mayor's loop. So we're going down here. Here we can see is that there's a turning is nicely capturing the one part of the mayor loop, mayor's loop. And then we're going down and here, well, it's also capturing good. And you see the optic nerve coming in from here. Um, and here, the, this part may be false, the overshooting, this doesn't look real, so we could just remove it. So if you remove it, you could see how it changes here. And then going down another slide, you will see here is a missing part of it, so it's a, only half of the mayor's loop capture in the fiber tracking. So what we could do is use switch the button to the menu drawing and try to annotate here. So left click, try to draw a rough outline and then release. So let's try to remove. And then we could use right click to remove the overshooting part. Let's just try to adding. So we could repeat the left click drawing to add some part of it, or either use right click to remove part of it. So I think that this voxel could be part of the mayor's loop. So you could really go through slides by slides, um, even though it's tedious, but it's just few slides and then can get very accurate. So from here, you will see that fiber tracking only capture this part of it. But I would say this is part of the mayor's loop. You, you will see that the greenish fiber going anterior, make a turn and then circling back. But here you will see that some of the purplish or bluish fiber is actually going up up and down. So that's a color coding that goes tell you that this goes up and down. It may not be part of the mayor's loop. The mayor's loop should be going like left to the right and then maybe a little bit tilting upward or downward, depending on the size orientation, but not that bluish color. So I would say that the mayor's loop here will be like this. So try to make up the missing part of it. And then this part may not be. Still can go down word to another slide. So the mayor's loop is like here. So you could quickly just join this, like give an outline. Even without fiber tracking, visually it could be more accurate down to the level of each box. So you can easily see while well, this probably part of the mayor's loop we need to pay attention to. Maybe here, maybe just only slice, only slice part of it, maybe small pieces of the mayor's loop. And right click to remove it, that we don't, we think it's not part of it. And then we can look at the 3D things. So this will be um, the extent of the opti radiation, the mayor's loop will be having a big sharp turning, especially the anterior part. Usually it's really hard to track, but we, for the purpose here, today we could just manually draw a region to tell where it is. And that, in addition to mirrors loop, another location we could bring in is LGN. 
Lateral geniculi, nuclei, and so you can put in LGN. So what I did is click on the, let me repeat and click on the address menu. I can just put in LGN and set that the LGN depth side at, and then you're coming in. So we see the location of LGN. It, this is based on the normalization. So maybe, maybe off one vessel or more. So you need to decide whether it's accurate or not. And based on location, you can remove the track that doesn't do that goes too far. And the last part of it would be the optic nerve. And here we can also use the cranial automatic fiber tracking. Go to the cranial nerve section. The second cranial nerve on the left will be. And then we're going to use the same setting, click on fiber tracking to see how it goes. So you see there's a one additional track coming in. Let me did uncheck the optic radiation, uncheck other regions, try to pinpoint where it is. So this tracking is, well, way too sensitive. I would say it's not that big based on our experience, either, either uh, on the structural image, it's not that big. So we could get it more restrictive. So instead of 20 tolerance difference, reduce it to 10. Remove this and do it and repeat again. So right now the tracking is more restrictive, but it's like, well, it's very slow. So we can just relax a little bit. <clears throat> now it's more look like the uh, optic nerve, even though some of the false tracking may come in, but we can manually remove those. So let's keep it running. And at any time you would like to stop it, just click on the stop button. And you will see that, well, once you click the stop button, that some of have been deleted. That's the function of topo the pruning that being added after the fiber tracking. Um, so it's just a studio automatically already move, removes some threads, go way far from this um, optic nerve here. And we can just remove here some track we think is not the part of the optic nerve will just go too far. And this roughly the location is it's bringing LGN, bringing the optic radiation. Um, and then this will be the locations where um the visual function um it located with the track. So if you damage your tracks within those regions, including the optic nerve, LGN, mass loop, optic radiation, then there could, there could be lead to a visual field defect. <clears throat> and then the next thing we're going to do is compare this with the one being damaged. So you, you may see here, well, all the color being the same, it's hard, really hard to tell. So what we could do is change the coloring Go to the track we're doing session. In the color session, instead of directional, we're putting assigned. So this was showing the same assigned color in the 3D window. And for the one that being removed during the surgery, we could specify here, assign color to current cluster to red color. So it's now you can see clearly Part of the mass loops track being removed, even in the 3D window is pretty clear. So the interior part of it. And then for the LGN or optic, optic nerve, it's really close. It's really, um, sometimes hard to tell in this 3D view. So what we could do is in, we could inspect it on the left-hand side, uncheck the fiber orientation, and then here for the red color corresponding to the one that's been removed. For the other colors, they are part of the um, up, up to tracks. And for the here, the male blue, I will also change it to the orange yellow color so we can see. So you see here, there's a bit overlap between the, the track being removed during surgery and part of the male blue. Um, So this part of being involved, that may lead to a visual field defect. In tensor LGN, well, maybe maybe part of the track 
we dated um, very close and by, but it's, I don't think there is much involving a GN or optim nerve. So you can see this optim nerve when it comes off, uh, come, comes off from the LGN, it doesn't really have something that's showing up right here. So re and this will correspond to the clinical findings that um, this 50-year-old uh, female has the postoperatural anatomopia. Um, so part of the visual field defect could be explained in, in, in this uh, finding. So for the second case, we'll do the same. And here we could quickly go through uh, each of the steps. First, we open the QSDR. Now we are going with the 30-year-old female patient. And this patient has more severe visual field defect due to maybe due to the damage to any part of the visual pathway. And we'll see whether the, the finding match with the clinical uh, presentation. So first step, the same, go to QSDR, open the post-op, and save the QA value. So here in the post-op, make sure it's post-op, the fifth file is for the Q QA value as a nifty file, save it. Once save it, we can close it. Now we open the pre-op of the same subject. Once the fifth file open, we insert the QA, the anisotropy value from the, from the post up. And before wrongly differential fiber tracking, click on the whole bunch tracking, see if the general quality is okay. Um, it seems that some of the artifacts in the back, but it's still usable, I would say. Now we could turn on the differential tracking change it to QA, and the second one is post up. 40% difference, click on fiber tracking. And you see here, after tracking, there's a lot of missing part. It's partly due to either um, the pruning, the pruning, the branding, so there's a, some pruning parameter added in, this reduce it to zero, so we can manually specifying, or we could reduce this minimum lens. So right now you see the small result coming in matching the location of the surgery site and there is no pruning it. So you can manually prune it using the shortcut of the control T. And here you will see this some track showing up. This is likely due to a ringing artifact. Um, that's very common if there is like a ghost artifact in the back. Um, Usually you go here, so you should just remove it. It's totally not uh, real, it's due to the artifact. So you press console T, or either use manual delete, and that's it. So that's all the location of the of the, the track that that being removed using the interior temporal pectomy of this case. The same, we save it. And I will add the prefix of MNI just to tell me, tell us like, well, it's a temp template space track. Now we go to the GQI reconstructed fit file. So GQI reconstructed fit file, just to remind is in the native space. So this 34 year old patient, go with the GQI fit file, open it up. And then we could load the, and here, open MNI space track from the output of the QSDR. So here, this will be the finding. Yes, to deal with wrong normalization. And then we'll do the same as I'm mapping the update radiation mirrors and then manually drawing part of the mirrors loop and LGN and also the update track. So first of all, the Go to the optic radiation, click on fiber tracking. So I see here is uh, catching a lot of fiber. It's not <clears throat> part of the optic radiation, so it change it, make it more restrictive. 
but have the sixteen other rings. And there's not enough tracks here, so we specify like thirty five thousand tracks. And there's a studio with keep seeding, keep tracking. You see until the not total number of tracks is reach the number of five thousand. Now we look at this three Ds. A lot of the fiber still not real or like for just being deviated, so it's just remove it. <clears throat> now we are going to look at the fiber orientation map on the left hand side and see if we miss part of the mayor's loop here. So go to Yes, the upper slice, that's okay. Going lower, so it's still okay. So here it's starting to have some missing part of the mayor's so loop. Use manual join to make it back. <clears throat> so is it some overshooting? So, so repeat it doing this until we capture most part of it. And this part may not be, maybe outside of it, so it's door section. So here you see the circle here, this is the mayor's loop, and this will be the up up the nerve coming in. So you see this it's a large portion of the optic nerve is quite big. It's like two or three voxels. And here we just draw a right, mayor's loop. Sometimes you may overshoot a little bit because it's just the difference only one or two voxels. Um you do it just repeat it doing this. Here you can see part of it. And so this and so this will be part of this loop. Okay, going down maybe still a little bit part of it from here. So in the 3D view in the middle, you can see how things really shows up <clears> of <throat> the entire mayor's loop. And then also bring LGN. Everything seems okay. Now we go with the optic nerve. Yeah. This time I will just cancel other regions to see if we can capture a better location of the optic nerve. I would reduce these things. I get, you get a, a lot of false findings. It's just too big. And this one makes much more sense, but still some is may not be the part of the optic nerve. So what we could do is that we could look at the tracking results and then compare things to the lab. See if anything just, just go way out of it. And try to capture it. So from here or either from here, you can see the location of the to the for example, here is part of the optic nerve. You can see how this is coming in <clears throat> on the left. And this should correspond to the track we are mapping. So either from the middle or from here, you can see how the optic nerve coming in. Um, I would say this is really a big optic nerve here. You see, it's like this tracks are across like two or three. Usually for most of the subjects, it's not that big. Um, just maybe one or two voxels, but it's subject across a 3D really sp large span of it. And you will see there is another part of the tracks that coming like here to this will be the anterior commissure coming out and then goes to the posterior. So this will be anterior commissure and then this will be the optic nerve. So once everything is done, let's switch to the presentation to um the assigned carter so we change the carter just for the level. that's what we did make it the same carter and for the the, the track that being removed during the surgery we assign it as a red carter and the others we just make it orange yellow and now we could have a com comparison it, first of all let's look at the mayor's loop 
it's really hard to tell whether it makes you involved maybe a little bit in the middle, but it's not that obvious. Um, and this considered is a big loop and here maybe not, it's just trivial involvement. So I would say many of still maybe not affected. Um, and we can look at the OGN, the OGN, so easy way to look at this in the middle part of it. So you can see how the red, so here you see some of them, of the red color tracks that have been removed during the surgery and those we track here. So, and this one, the LOGNs here, maybe how to tell the exact location, but if we just remove it. So, so if we see if the LGN involved, well, maybe not really. So you see the LGNs, doesn't have the those three color tracks. Just like the previous case, it's not really the OGN being involved. And also the mayors do things to be away from the location of the surgical interventions location. But when we check the optic nerve, we see some things here. So we just uncheck the OGN. Here. So if we compare the the optic nerve and the the finding from differential tracking, we see part of it here could be involved. This that could due to the optic track is um the optic nerve in this patient could, could be much larger than the others. So it's and also the part that coming in before the OGN they're being involved. So here. It's really hard to tell in the 3D view because I there's a bit a, a close overlap like, on top of each other. But if you go look at it on the left hand side, just cancel the fiber orientation view and make sure that you turn on the, the color red and color yellow, yellowish orange, and then see if they go have, having some overlap here. It would be having a good hint of what's going on with these subjects. Uh, visual field defect, and I would say it would be part of it due to hurting the optic nerve here, maybe. It, only part of it, maybe here is some, some overlap. Also, when it, before it comes to the OGN, this part may have some overlap. That would be likely the location of it, the deficit. So in summary, this um this will be the way to have a comparison of like after the surgery to review uh what, what will be the cause of the location that lead to the visual field defect. Um thank you for watching the video.